Hello, Ivy Environmental students. Today we're going to be jumping into our topic 7.2, which is starting climate change. We're going to focus on the basic terms and specific causes of climate change. Let's jump in. So when we talk about basic climate change terms, we have to make sure we're keeping these terms straight. So first we hear the word weather a lot. We hear it on a day-to-day -day basis because it's a day-to-day -day piece of information. Specifically, it's going to refer to changes in temperature, sunlight, wind, precipitation, and it's very, very short term. So the weatherman, weather lady, they give us short term, daily, weekly information. This is compared to climate, which is a overall, how is the temperature, precipitation, sunlight, wind, how is it overall in the long term? Big, big, big picture trends. So that's climate. So which one's short term? Weather. Which one's long term? Climate. Right, that's a big difference because when people are confused about climate change, a lot of times they say, oh, it's, it's cold today, it's not climate change. All right, well, first of all, today, specifically, just one day, it doesn't matter because climate is a big picture overall thing. All right, next we're going to talk about the term global warming. Global warming is referring to the fact that in climate change, the Earth's average temperature is increasing. This is something that we can see by climate scientists tracking temperature through various different means that we'll look at in class. But overall, the scientists have consensus that the temperature average across the globe is increasing, and that is a fact. But we're worried that it's going to continue to increase. Climate change, though, is the fact that that increasing temperature can influence other things. So as the Earth's average temperature will rise, that's going to have impacts on ocean currents, sea level, flooding, extreme weather events, and much, much more. So climate change is the changes that are happening in general. And warming, global warming, is the, just the temperature piece. All right, so now that we have some of those basic terms down, we're going to jump into the major causes. But even before then, a couple more terms. So um, we're going to learn this word, the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect, that term, is referring to a natural phenomena, a natural process. The natural process is that solar radiation, sunlight, will enter the Earth's atmosphere as short wave, high energy UV. We've been talking about UV entering all the time. We hope that that ozone layer will block some of it out, but sometimes some of it gets through, right? Well, the part that does get through past the ozone layer, past some of the clouds, that part will hit the Earth's surface and it'll bounce back off the Earth's surface as lower energy, longer wave infrared, All right? IR stands for infrared. Okay, so what happens then? Well, that energy gets kind of trapped in between our atmosphere and our Earth's surface because of its wavelength is different. And that actually keeps us warm. This is a phenomenon you might have happened to come across in your car. So on a hot summer's day, what does it feel like coming back into a car? It's really warm, right? Because that car, it traps in a lot of energy. So we're going to make sense of this a little bit more because humans have enhanced this problem, all right? Because we need the greenhouse effect so that we don't become an ice planet, but we don't want too much of it. And unfortunately, we're getting too much of it because of things called greenhouse gases, which I'll abbreviate GHGs. They trap more of that long wave, low energy infrared, and that's going to increase the temperature more and more. How does this happen? Well, again, remember that just like your car can trap the light bouncing back in and out of your car, right? So it comes in as UV. It gets trapped as infrared, right? And that keeps our world just warm, but we don't want it to be too hot, right? And so what we're talking about here is what happens if we were to thicken the glass on the car, kind of like a magnifying glass, right? What would happen to the temperature on the inside of your car? It would get even hotter. Well, that is the problem with the human impacted greenhouse effect. So our normal right our normal atmosphere has these greenhouse gases that we'll talk about in a moment but through fossil fuel emissions factories and such we have put way 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 more of those greenhouse gases up into the atmosphere and they keep trapping 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 that infrared long wave low energy um, and that's heating us up we're going to practice kind of discussing and graphically showing this process so in general, greenhouse effect happens naturally, but humans are enhancing it and making it worse. 
Well, what were those GHGs or greenhouse gases? You actually have to know these different things, where they come from, how they're different, how much exists in the atmosphere of them. So let's go through them step by step. So greenhouse gases are things that can absorb and emit that infrared radiation. Remember, they're like the glass on the car that is trapping the energy in. So when we think about them, we need to know, well, how much is there of these things in the atmosphere? Because that's going to be based, really impact how worried I am about them. So the number one of these in the atmosphere is actually water vapor, which makes sense, right? Water's evaporating and going into the atmosphere. But why are we worried about it? Well, we'll talk about that in a moment, okay? Carbon dioxide, that's the one we hear about all the time in the news, and it's the one that we feel like we can have the biggest impact on. Methane, all right, methane is called CH4. That's a big one, and we don't talk about it as much, but it is very important. Nitrous oxide, notice that I'm not referring to this as NOx because it's N2O. There's only one O. There's actually two Ns. This is going to be something we find a lot in fertilizer, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But do not call it NOx, because it is not NOx. Lastly, we have CFCs and HCFCs, which are the synthetic cousin of CFCs. So let's talk about these in order, and we'll also want to know, are they all equally as powerful at warming the globe? So when we talk about the strengths and how worried we are about these things, we call it global warming potential, which is abbreviated GWP, global warming potential. That is the efficiency of the molecule of the GHG. How strong is it? And it's usually going to be relative to carbon dioxide. All right, so um, when we think of this, notice that we are going to ha give carbon dioxide a global warming potential of 1 because everything is going to be relative to carbon dioxide. And I would copy down this chart because it's pretty important. Next, we have methane. And methane lasts a lot longer in the atmosphere compared to carbon dioxide or water vapor. This is how long one molecule would stay in the atmosphere. On top of that, it is so much better and stronger at warming the earth. So we would rank it 72 times as warming as carbon dioxide. Whoa! So that is scary, right? But it was less frequently found in the atmosphere as we saw in the previous slide, but still it is a lot stronger at warming the globe. Nitrox oxide, that N2O, it lasts even longer in the atmosphere, right? One molecule will just get stuck up there in the atmosphere for a really long time. And it is almost 300 times stronger than carbon dioxide at warming the planet. Whoa! That is how much stronger it is at keeping that infrared energy stuck near us on the planet. Then we have CFCs. Oh my goodness gracious, 100 years in the atmosphere and 11,000 times stronger at warming the planet. 11,000! <laughs> Scary. And then we have its synthetic cousin that was trying to initially replace CFCs is also terrible. It doesn't last as long in the atmosphere, but it's still 5,000 plus times as bad as CO2 at warming. So we'll kind of make sense of this a little bit more in class, but in general, oh, not just carbon dioxide is a problem. We talk a lot about carbon dioxide, and we'll talk, we'll discuss why. But there is a lot of other greenhouse gases that warm our atmosphere, and they have other problems like lasting a long time and being even stronger at warming. So let's go through each of these individually. So water vapor gets up into the atmosphere because it evaporates, right? But it'll warm the atmosphere, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in class. Um, and it can just make the atmosphere even hotter. Think about on a humid day, the air feels hotter. Carbon dioxide, we know, gets into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels, burning biomass by deforesting the planet and volcanic eruptions. Methane, CH4, is going to show up into the atmosphere during decomposition. It, it comes out of bacteria a lot of times. It comes out of manure. It comes out of cow farts. It comes out of landfills. 
methane is a big component of natural gas. And so when we talk about burning natural gas, a lot of that is methane. Nitrous oxide is going to be most of the time referred to as the fertilizer greenhouse gas. So every time we talk about synthetic fertilizers built and producing them, transporting them and such, when we think about that, oh my goodness, we are really talking about nitrous oxide and thinking about that coming out of our soil after we put it on the soil, ooh, right? Um, other ones we have our CFCs and HCFCs into this category. Remember, those were aerosols, hairsprays, refrigerants. We tried to ban them through the Montreal Protocol, but they're still existing in the atmosphere. Those were all through industrial processes making those sprays. So what do we do about this stuff? It seems kind of scary that all these gases are in the atmosphere. Well, the globe came together and made this panel called the Intergovernmental, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, which is the major governing body through the UNEP, the United Nations Environmental Program, Program and the World Meteorology. Meteorological Association. They came together back when Miss Clausen was born in 1988. There's a bunch of countries involved and bunches of scientists, and they all come together on a regular basis to give us past data that they're continuing to find, looking at ice cores and tree rings, current data and predicted levels of data based on computer models and so forth and they give us information about what our strategy should be what should we do about all these greenhouse gases and we'll be talking about strategies ourselves in class but in general what we're finding especially for co2 which is our major focus is that since industrialization after 1750 we have an increasing technology amount we have an increasing population size more money more people are striving to be medcs more consumption of natural resources or natural capital what do we see in this graph that follows that industrialization we see an increase in co2 as of right now we are over the 400 parts per million count um, this graph is very old we are beyond that um, and we'll talk and look at more recent graphs in class. But really, that, a lot of that has to do with fossil fuel burning that is coming along with all of these different things. So in class, we'll talk about where we know and don't know how to impact these things. Um, but a lot of climate skeptics will say, oh, oh, CO2 has changed over the history of the planet. It's not humans that are causing this. Well, here's my response to that. And same with the response of the scientists across the planet and globe right now who've all come to consensus say, yes, CO2 has fluctuated up and down throughout the ages during geologic time thousands of years ago. However, however, we are now going at a faster rate of increase after industrialization and are beyond the regular normal amount, all right? We have not seen this high. Remember, I said we're above 400 now. This is an old figure. Um, we have not seen this amount since back earlier than when the mammoths existed, all right? And many other creatures have gone extinct because of these amounts. So we are worried. All right, we'll talk more in class about impacts and ways we can adapt and mitigate these problems. Great job, guys.